There is a video on Tony Sieber's YouTube channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below from eight years ago. Now in this video, Tony Sieber confidently says that by 2030, nuclear will be finished worldwide. Now, the truth is that many nuclear power plants will still be in our operation in 2030, most likely. However, Siba was correct in terms of his mathematical predictions for nuclear. The cost blowouts, he said, are insane. It doesn't stack up mathematically. He was right then. But is he right now? Well, it turns out he's much more right than we ever could have thought back in 2016 when he released this information. I've done some research, guys, and it turns out that actually these so-called small modular nuclear reactors that were going to solve the world's energy problems and prove SIBA wrong, well, it turns out that when we look into the details, and I'll break down the details here of each nuclear reactor, the small ones in the worldwide, there are actually currently three of them, how they have blown out in cost by such astronomical amounts and time frame, talking about years for them to build, that Siba was actually 100% right. In fact, he could not have possibly been any more right. If you want to see this video, I'll put a link in the description. A lot of people are saying that I'm wrong about solar, about wind, about battery storage, about electric cars. They're saying actually the future of the world is pretty much nuclear. It's based on nuclear. And the key argument they're making is that the small modular nuclear reactors, they're going to save us all. They're going to prevent catastrophe. They're going to be some sort of panacea to all the world's problems. Unfortunately, the reality is looking a little bit different to the, well, to the dream of a nuclear world. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Guys, I have to admit, I've admitted this a few times. I've said this now for years. I did used to believe that the answer, well, not the answer, but one of the main answers to the world's energy needs were nuclear. I thought, well, nuclear would be a big solution because, you know, wind can't always make enough power generation during the nighttime. So my theory was we'll have these nuclear power plants that can just produce enough power um, for the nighttime use when solar isn't operating. But then I realized actually even that does not make sense. Batteries together combined with solar and wind, and particularly solar, are really a much better solution. And the biggest reason for this was simply the cost, the cost and the time, cost and time, two things that um, are extremely important. What do I mean by that? Well, unfortunately, the truth is here, it's sort of like um, the principle of communism. In in theory, you can see why, how people come up with this idea of communism. They thought it'd be great. They thought it'd be this sort of, um, everything would be fair for everyone. It would, it would work out right for everyone. And I remember when I was at university, at college, and I found this, so I was really thinking about this idea more and, you know, reading some of these communist manifestos from Marx and Engels and everyone else, thinking, oh, this is so great. And then, and I'm, and then realizing and just thinking to myself, hang on a minute, but in the real world, it's never worked. Never. It's never worked. Why has it never worked? Well, I don't know. There's a lot of reasons for that. But when it comes to nuclear, the biggest reason that it's never worked is the cost always almost at least doubles, sometimes triples. If it doubles, well, you've done really well. If it triples, that's about the average. In terms of the average cost to build a nuclear power plant. The other problem, generally what will happen is a company will come along and they'll say, yeah, we can build you a nuclear power plant. Rah, rah, rah. It's going to take six years. Usually it takes about uh, 10 to 15 years. So if, for example, your government becomes, you get a new government coming in, could be Republicans, could be whoever it is in whatever country it is, they come in and say, no, 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 no. renewable energy is a joke. It doesn't work. Uh, we want to build nuclear reactors. Um, they know they don't have to deal with any responsibility of this because when it actually happens, they're not going to be around anymore. I mean, how often, unless they're like, um, you know, um, Vladimir Putin or the president of China, they'll probably still be around. But everywhere else where people get democratically elected, well, most places where people get democratically elected, 15 years later, that government's long gone. And whoever made the decision to build this nuclear power plant, generally, they're probably already retired by now. They don't have to deal with the consequences. The consequences, though, are pretty shocking. And unfortunately, a lot of countries in Europe have decided, well, yeah, nuclear is great. Let's do that. But like I said, that's something people decide, politicians decide, knowing they won't have to deal with the consequences when they are still in power. Um, they can just sort of sail off into the sunset. They're retired by the time these things are even built. 
A new report has assessed the feasibility of deploying small modular nuclear reactors to meet increasing energy demands around the world. The findings, well, put it this way, they don't look very good. Small modular nuclear reactors, which I've reported on many times, in theory, actually sound awesome. They sound just brilliant. I mean, honestly, if you've watched a video about, about small modular nuclear reactors, I can understand why you believe that they would work. I can understand why you think they, and I keep getting freaking emails from people saying, no, nah, look at this video on nuclear. Look at this dude here, mate. Hey, mate, you're wrong. Nuclear is the solution because um, Joe Nuclear said so. Look at his video. There's the proof. No, guys, okay, here's the thing. Small modular nuclear reactors generally defined as nuclear power plants that have capacity that tops out at about 300 megawatts and have to run around 30,000 US homes are unfortunately still a pipe dream. According to the Institute for Energy Economics and Financial Analysis, as in the real world, which prepared the report, there are about 80 small modular nuclear reactor concepts currently in various stages of development around the world. Concepts, key point, right? Do you have any different WRX, STI concepts Subaru have made over the years? Have you seen any of them actually get made? Any of those concepts? No, you haven't, have you? Same deal here. While such reactors were once thought to be the solution to the complexity, security risks, and costs of large scale reactors, the report asks if continuing to pursue these smaller nuclear power plants is in fact a worthwhile endeavor at all in terms of meeting the demand for more and more energy around the world. The answer to this question is pretty much found in the report's title. Small modular nuclear reactors are still too expensive, too slow, and too risky. Lots of um, naysaying, I get that. I don't like naysays either. But um, yeah, uh, the question is, to me, it's not really the question of can they work? Yeah, they can, for sure, eventually. But in the meantime, solar prices continue to drop. Battery prices continue to drop. And we've just seen in California, what do batteries do for you? They solve the problems that we thought we had. They do. If that's not clear enough, though, the report's executive summary certainly gets to the heart of their findings. The rhetoric from small modular reactor advocates is very loud and very persistent, and I can vouch for that. This time will be different because the cost overruns and scheduled delays that have plagued large reactor construction projects will not be repeated with the new designs, says the report. But the few SMRs that have been built, small modular reactors, or have been started, paint a very different picture in the real world. One that looks startlingly similar to the past. Massive construction delays are still the norm and costs are continuing to rise. They're too expensive. That's simply the reality. The cost of SMRs is at the forefront of the report's argument against the deployment of the reactors. According to some of the data it provides, all three SMRs currently operating today, there is a total of three worldwide, plus one now being built in Argentina, went miles over budget. And I mean, so far over budget, it's insane. Now, as you can see, the, the one that was built in China, it went over budget by uh, 300%, uh, the one in Russia uh, by 400%, and the one in Argentina by 700%. Yeah, now here's the thing. I mean, yeah, it's true that the one in Russia and China are operating, but they did begin building those back in 2015, nine years ago. The report authors point out that a project in Idaho called New Scale had to be scrapped because during its development between 2015 and 2023, costs soared from $9,964 per kilowatt to $21,561 more than double the price per kilowatt of energy produced. It's just simply not mathematically feasible. There's no way you can that stacks up to renewables. It just doesn't. Additionally, the costs for three other small plants in the US have all skyrocketed dramatically from their initial cost assessments. Now, as you can see here, guys, from this chart, the costs of, they've either doubled or tripled based on the price for the different uh, proposed US small modular nuclear reactors in America. Um, you can see there's one here in, in Vogel, which has doubled in cost estimate, and that one was canceled. That was one, I believe, in Idaho. And then there's another one, a new scale project here. You can see that that one is doubled in terms of the cost per kilowatt hour from 9,000 to 21,500. 
Um, who knows what it would actually come to in, in reality eventually. Now, another one, 2017, the price was at 4,507. That price has gone to 17,969. Yeah, so you get in the picture here, guys, that the costs are just nowhere anywhere near what people are claiming in YouTube videos, um, what people, experts said that they actually would be. So not only are the excessive costs of building SMRs massively problematic in and of themselves, um, says the uh, actual people who did the research on this, but the money being poured into the projects is money that is not being spent on developing other sources of energy that are cleaner, quicker to deploy, and of course, much, much safer. It is vital that the debate consider the opportunity costs associated with the SMR push writes the authors, the dollars invested in SMRs will not be available for use in building out wind, solar, and battery storage resources. These carbon-free and much lower cost technologies are available today, right now, and can be quickly installed, and they will push the transition from fossil fuels forward significantly in the coming 10 years. Years when SMRs will still be looking for licensing approval and construction funding. All of that, guys, it's not jargon. It's not public relations nonsense. It's simply reality. That last bit gets to another point. Another of the report's findings that building SMRs simply takes too much time. The Shidao Bay project in China, for example, was supposed to take four years to build, but actually took 12 years. The Russian ship Born project had an estimated completion time of three years, but it took 13 years. Three to 13. And the ongoing CAREM project in Argentina was supposed to be done in four years, but it's been 13 and it still hasn't been completed. Four years and 13 years later, it still hasn't been completed. It's exactly the same as the nuclear reactor, still hasn't been finished in the UK. The Hinkley project, that one's been going for, I believe about 14 years now and still has not been completed. The report points out that the Empower PWR project, which was one of the first planned SMRs in the US, had its plug pulled in 2017 after it was clear it wouldn't meet its 2022 deployment date, a decision that effectively wasted the 500 million that had already been spent on this build. Uh, in fact, unfortunately, billions of dollars have been wasted on projects that will never be completed. They've already been canceled, in other words. Despite this real world experience, Westinghouse, X Energy, and New Scale, among others, continue to claim that they will be able to construct these SMRs in 36 to 48 months, perhaps quickly enough to leave them online, to have them online by 2030, write the authors. GE Hitachi claims it ultimately will be able to construct its 300 megawatt facility in as little as 24 months. But at this point in time, um, no one is, has proven that this is actually true. It hasn't happened yet. Admittedly, there is a not zero chance that this is possible, but it flies in the face of nuclear industry experience, both in terms of past SMR development and construction efforts and the larger universe of full-size reactors, all of which have taken significantly longer than projected to begin commercial operation. And significantly longer is a, a massive understatement, obviously. Despite breakthroughs in SMR manufacturing, such as the welding advance that allows workers to put together an SMR reactor vessel in 24 hours instead of 12 months, that's amazing, the time it takes to get these facilities into the field will likely continue to be a huge barrier to their adoption. Remember, one of the things we're facing here is approvals, and government approvals for this kind of stuff take a long time. And finding the right location, that also takes a long time. No one wants to live even remotely close to any kind of nuclear reactor, whether it's small, modular, or otherwise. Too risky. This is the other issue. Both the unpredictable cost and the extraordinary building delays makes SMR development just too big of a risk, says the IEEFA. But that's not the only potential peril. Because the technology for this small-scale nuclear facility is fairly new and untested, risks could exist in terms of functionality and safety. Yeah, that's true. We don't really have a lot of uh, history on whether or not these things could potentially become a Chernobyl. We don't know. For example, the authors question if the new SMRs will actually be able to output the kind of power they claim they can. Based on cost and development estimates going so widely afield, the sense in the report is that power output claims could also be false. Safety. The report quotes a 2023 study for the US Air Force that said, since SMR technology is still developing and is not deployed in America yet, 
information is scarce concerning the various costs or for operations and maintenance, decommissioning and end of life dissolution, property restoration and site cleanup and waste management. And it's true, guys, do you think China and Russia are gonna give the US correct information on their small modular nuclear power plants? Oh, they're, yeah, they're just gonna say, no, nah, they're fantastic. They're not gonna go, well, actually, this is, this is the bottom line is this, X, you know. That's not gonna happen. The authors point out the, that because many SMRs are built using identical technologies, if a component of that technology fails, it could easily affect reactors around the world. For example, they bring up the fact that steam generators have needed to be replaced at more than 100 pressurized water reactors with half of those operating in the US because of the denting and wall thinning of tubes made from a material called heat-treated alloy 6000. Now they're saying that SMRs won't have those same issues. They'll have other issues. We don't know what those are yet, but of course issues will pop up. No technology has ever been perfect. Now newatlas.com says that, so too expensive, too slow and too risky and not at all where we should be focusing our energy these days. As the study authors make clear in their conclusion and everything here guys really is while proving Tony Sieber to be correct, once again, I know I sound like a broken record, but he's been saying this since I believe 2012, could have been 2014 as well, but I think 2012, 12 years. And he's never been more right than today. Maybe we should just ignore all these um, snake oil salesmen and just um, actually focus on the real, the real products we have today in front of us, rather than just critiquing them actually you know, focus on getting the work because they do work. At least 375,000 megawatts of new renewable energy generating capacity is likely to be added to the US grid in the next seven years. By contrast, IEEFA believes it is highly unlikely any SMRs will be brought online in that time frame. The comparison couldn't be clearer. Regulators, utilities, investors, and government officials should acknowledge this and embrace the available reality. Renewables are the near-term solution and just the solution, period. Thanks for watching. But let me know what you think in the comments. Am I right? Am I wrong? Always willing to assess my thinking. If you can, you know, not Terence Howard proof, but you know, give me some real logical proof of why I'm getting this all wrong. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching.